This program is proudly brought to you by the Peel Dance Bar, corner of Peel and Wellington Streets, Collingwood. Ladies, gentlemen, and the rest of you out there, and welcome <laughs> to Squirrel here on the TV yeah. channel 31, which is your community station. And we're not a market on this week; we're all on something else. So let's get on with it. Let's introduce the squirrelers for this week. Oh, yes. Before we do that, I might introduce our special guest actually, because you can see her up in the top corner of your TV there. That is Lynn <laughs> Gordon. Um, she is an Auslan interpreter. And she's going to be doing her best to interpret our gobbledygook today <laughs> while we talk. So um, please make her welcome, everyone. <laughs> Yay! Um, I'm also not sure, but I think we may be one of the first Glibbet TV <laughs> programs to um, have, have an Auslan. Glibbet because some people weren't aware what we're talking True. about. True, we week. will explain Glibbet. Let me introduce the rest of you first, and then we can get on with that. The lady that uh, we all want to be <laughs> is Monique Vanderveen. Make a welcome. Monique. We're going to be talking to you what you've been up to very shortly. Oh, Troy, yeah. where next to me? Yeah, oh. love and on my other side is the beautiful Peter O'Grady. Oh, small oh, plan. Um, small plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the size, it's what you do with it. <laughs> Sally Goldner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Sally's been out and about on the town as usual, and we're going to talk to her a little bit more about that too. Now, yes. mm. first up, I just wanted to... Um, uh, condolences to Molly. Um, he's had a bit of a rough time with yes. Shirley passing yeah. away, and yeah. also Ted Molly also passed away. So yes. um, our condolences and yeah. best wishes go out to Molly Meldrum. Um, Peter, we yes. got something to talk. I about. do. I was going to try. I was going to. I resolved that I was going to do a hard hitting and gritty story today, but then I found this one. I thought, let <laughs> <laughs> Samantha Fox. You remember Samantha Fox? She's a lesbian. No, she's a lesbian. She is not. She's a Christian. No, she, a born <laughs> again, she's a born again Christian lesbian. Oh, she's she's going Exodus. out with her with her manager Myra Stratton, and all she loves she loves doing they love quietly enjoying oh, um, oh. Live quiet, living quietly, enjoying meals with friends and having long walks. Samantha Fox, the stuff of a million men's <laughs> dreams, <laughs> is now a dyke. I think that's great. Yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 How do you feel as a dyke? Do you think yeah. that's a good thing to have Samantha Fox? I, I just wouldn't ever thought of Samantha Fox as no. being a lesbian. Yeah. 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 Breaking those stereotypes. Yeah. Enjoys bushwalks, reading, quiet yeah. dinners. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
can you can we talk about what you've been up to? Uh, a little bit. It's very exciting. No. It's all okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. We're living vicariously through Monique's life at the moment because uh, she uh, has a job with um, a multinational corporation that's destroying the planet. But um, <laughs> I can do some amazing stuff. And hence the fact that there are certain things that I can't discuss. <laughs> um, that I'm, I'm bound by contract job. not to discuss. <laughs> okay. So I'll right. just leave it there. Okay. <laughs> There's little things about <laughs> jumping out of choppers and yes. orange uncles that we like. That's quite nice. So, um, He's making that right up now. <laughs> <laughs> Sally? What are you going to talk to us about? Well, I was going to talk, given that it's that time of the year, about um, there's been a bit of think, stuff in the news this week about um, gays and football, which seems an unlikely combination, but there has been a thing come out about the Pink Magpies, a group of GLBT Collingwood supporters, <laughs> and they have an email address, pinkmagpies at hotmail.com. <laughs> And <clears throat> by the way, that's why this little tiger is here. It's um, Tabitha T. Tiger, because I'm a Richmond supporter, and they actually have an e-group, um, which I, the name of which I can't remember, but it's pretty much e-groups, Richmond Football Club Gay or something. So hop in there, and of course, Sam Newman you know on the footy show. Yeah. <coughs> but surely I thought, like, you know, foot, in football, like, if you were a, a fan, it didn't matter. You know, what sex, what, what creed, it, as long as you supported the team, it didn't matter. As long as you got to see jock straps, that's all. Yeah, yeah, all that. Blokes, though, so yeah, yeah. Most, I was a little bit disappointed on the game on, on Channel 7 on Friday night. They had the footage of the boys, and there was one boy there putting on black nail polish, and, um, and one of the guys, uh, oh, one of the big mag guys, um, group, and one of the guys voiced over and said, mm, my name's Nigel, and I just thought... What a shame, like they'd shown us something really positive and yeah. then he had to go and do the normal mm. heterosexual bullshit crap. Yeah. Mm, Nigel, handbag carrying yeah. off. Yeah. So, um, just destroyed it in the same yeah. breath. Well, well, that was the thing. I mean, the footy show on Channel 9 apparently, uh, I've heard varying reports, I didn't see it, but apparently um, uh, one report was that it was uh, sort of just okay, it was d sort of just okay, but some, a lot, one another report said that um, you know, Eddie and some of the other panellists just didn't know where the hell to put themselves discussing this thing, so who knows? Yeah. But yeah. it's a good thing because, I mean, I've been to footy as, you know, as a Richmond supporter and I remember one of the stupidest things I've heard was some um, supporters of another team yelled out, Richmond are pedophiles or something. And it's just, <laughs> um, it's, it's like, gross. that's why yeah. guys, yeah. poofs don't go to footy because yeah. how many times do you hear, oh, you're a bloody poofter or something, or you're a bloody <laughs> girl? <laughs> so hopefully you yeah. 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 um, But I, I um, for, uh, one last touching on footy. My boys got up last week, go to the Saints! Uh, it's a pity it was the last game that you played this season, <laughs> but anyway, you did get up, and well done, it was fantastic. Um, oh, Monique, have you got something to talk about? Um, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I've got, got a picture. For all of you movie buffs and, and whatnot, um, Queer as Folk is going to be um, available on DVD oh. Oh, um, at, at, towards the end of the month, and not to make an editorial, I'm sure you can find it at good video shops. Fantastic, um, so we'll be over your place at the end of the month. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 little movie. Yeah, yeah, but it, for all of those that don't know what Queer as Folk, is it's a um oh. Peter Peter it's, it's just Excellent. amazing. Go watch yeah, it. Find out what it is. What <laughs> is cool Tell like in, in, in Manchester? Manchester. Yeah. Manchester. And it's very real. They actually in have Manchester. sex. Yeah. Not just this. Not, not like the body. Controversial <laughs> sex too. Controversial <laughs> sex. <laughs> Controversial <laughs> sex, not just kissing no. and stuff. In All the right, first um, twenty seconds. Oz Showbiz <laughs> Cares Equity Fights AIDS presents Hats Off, which is coming up again very shortly. We remember last year we had uh, Annie, the lovely Annie Feeling come in and talk we to did. us about Hats Off. Tick -tick. They were also involved with the tick -tick, tick -tick, <laughs> involved with the prisoner night as well. It's coming up Sunday, November the eleventh. Uh, this year, 8 p.m. at the National Theatre down in St Kilda. Of course, tickets are from Ticketek. Ticketek. We look forward to having the lovely Annie Fiorin coming in, or maybe not. Maybe someone else coming in <laughs> and talking to us. I do know that we are having yes. some. I think they're called the Golden Girl Tappers, or they're an, uh, an older group of ladies that do tap tapping, yeah. so they're oh, going to come yeah, in because yeah, they're appearing in it. Um, the other thing that I was saying, um, I've really got into um, something in the air this week. Has anybody else been watching it on the ABC? I know mm -hmm. they've been messing around the time and everything, but it was just so full on this week. If anyone's watching from the ABC, it was so great. I found out this week that it's been canned, though. It finishes in oh, April, really? Really? which is a real oh, shame. So, cool. sure. um, Let's go over now for our first instalment from the news desk from the lovely Ross Jacobs. Take away, Ross. Right. Thank you, Paul. Welcome to the MCV news desk. Um, having gone through a series of events this week described as horrific, a transgender woman's tragic story has gone from bad to worse. The woman, facing 10 charges of armed robbery, walked away from a drug rehabilitation centre into which she was transferred from prison, only to be picked up by police on Wednesday. 
The woman, known only as Jay, broke the conditions of her bail when she left the intensive rehab program at Odyssey House in Lower Plenty. According to their policy of, of assistance, not imprisonment, the centre has faced criticism by police and the media for assisting Jay with her decision to leave. But the question remains as to whether or not intensive rehab was suitable for a person in the agitated state of mind that Jay was in after being released from prison. Jay faces the arms robbery charges after an alleged crime spree earlier in the year. MCV reported last month on her claims of being pack raped in a cell in the Port uh, Phillip prison where she was confined in contact with other male prisoners despite a specific court order saying she needed special care. After her allegations and with the assistance of equal opportunity experts, she was granted bail from the prison with the condition she received treatment from Odyssey House for her drug dependency. Jay's case is set to go back to the Magistrates Court on the 24th of September, where she will presumably face both the existing charges of armed robbery and new charges of breaking her bail conditions. Jay told the staff at the Lower Plenty Odyssey House that she was going to see her lawyer, Melinda Walker, as soon as she left on Monday, but did not make contact with her until she was apprehended by police in Mordialloc. According to Walker, Jay's case has gone from bad to worse and is just sad. Walker says her client is currently refusing to talk to anyone about where she has been since she left the clinic. Jay is currently in a custody centre where she, where, and whether she is put back in Port Phillip Prison remains to be seen. According to Walker, she has specifically asked for the magistrate's court order for her special treatment to be ignored um, because it would result in her facing extended periods of isolated remand. That's all. Thanks, Paul. Okay. And thanks, Ross. Um, I forgot to welcome all our new viewers tonight, um, all the glibbit uh, <laughs> deaf people out there that may be watching for the first time tonight. We'd just like to welcome you along mm -hmm. and uh, hope that you enjoy the show. Um, and please get back to us and tell us what you thought about it. Um, one other thing about, we talked about something in the air again during the break yeah. there, and they did last week, Sally, they... Um, Cro uh, cro I was going to say crossed cross over. <laughs> <laughs> they, they crossed the issue of cross-dressing last week, yeah. um, and they handled it really, really well. There was a football coach that came down from the city yeah. um, who was um, a, a, a bloke in a frock. He kept on calling himself, and um, mm. they finally found each other and, and sat down and had, uh, I think they were drinking a cup of tea in their lovely pink okay. frock each. So yeah. it, I thought that it handled it really well. Okay. Well, it, there was due to be an episode with some of the girls from Seahorse Club, actually, it's sort of yeah. as in the scene and the um, yeah. resident of Seahorse. Was that, was that it? Or? Um, no. No, I didn't see anyone else, so okay. maybe that's still to come. Still yeah. to come, yeah. right. so, so they're, they're building up. Mm. Um, yeah. There's like something in there at 6 o'clock on the ABC, okay. and um, Monday to Thursday, it's very much yeah. worth a while. Just, just quickly, good on your ABC for tackling those sort of issues. Yeah, it's a yeah. yeah. And we had the football boys' calendar this week too, which was sensational. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a big spunk. All right, we will be back with more Squill around the desk very shortly. <laughs> Make yourself a cup, I'll come back. This is Bent TV. Could be our theme song here, couldn't it? What you see is what you get, because yeah. love right. No frilly bits here. No, no. Well, no, not <laughs> no, no, that I know of anyway. We're real blokes. Um, all right, <laughs> we, Peter, <laughs> 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 especially my <mine. laughs> <laughs> real blokes that have frilly tellies. I don't know. I just came out of Delhi. Anyway, not get into that. Uh, we have got some footage coming up now of the Melbourne Marching Girls. So, uh, oh, uh, well, it's uh, not really. We'll be coming up very shortly. So, before we go to that, we might talk about the Rainbow Gong Show, which Ooh, is coming is. up Friday, the 2nd of November at 7.30 at the Greyhound Hotel. Now, this is um, a gong show night. We are requiring contestants to uh, get in there and perform 
some of us yes. at TV people will be doing a, a bit of a number on the <laughs> night, which I think would drag would be interesting. Well, could be tempted. Could I be think tempted. Not, yeah, we'll, mm, mm. we'll send your boats in. <laughs> no, you right. could do a drag king and you could do a drag queen act together. Oh, no! <laughs> and now we are going to see the footage. As I said, this is of the Marching Girls at the Midwinter Fundraiser. Take it away. We're in the uh, the uh, foyer of the uh, Moulin Rouge uh, Melbourne Dancing Girls or Marching Girls. I'm not too sure. This is where Bent TV. We're not too sure. I've met another bunch here. Now you're walk-on. <laughs> this is a walk-on. You're a walk-on dancing marching girl. Um, yes, I am. Look, I, actually, I've been disqualified from the Marching Girls. Why was that? Well, I just couldn't keep time. You know when you used to mark time. Now, you know when you were at school. Did you ever do the marching? I never went to school. I, I just kept on losing my feet, so they disqualified. Find me, yeah. but that's that's all right. That's all right. I'm I'm in the therapy session now, and in the support group for marching girls who just don't quite make it. Well, that was from Lindsay Curley. It just didn't quite make it. Now, young girl, what's your name? My name's Zoe. What's your name? I'm from the <laughs> sis, little boy. Be uh, Zoe, you're from MCB. Oh, be oh, it's all the same. I can't pick one from the oh. other. Now, you're a marching girl. I am not a marching girl, alas, no. Why not? Well, I have this phobia of appearing in public. I don't know why you've got that thing pointing at me because, you know, I just really can't What's stand it. What's your name? I'm Jules, the DJ. The DJ. Can we be groupies of the DJ? Absolutely, any time you like. And aren't you a famous marching girl as well, Jules? Well, I'm actually one of the truck people. I look after the water on the night at Mardi Gras. Tell the Bent TV land people, how much do you expect to make? Um, well, probably about $4,000, we hope. <laughs> Stage at a lesbian love fest place. Um, I, uh, we know this slag's name is. Do call me a slag, Sprinkle. Slag. Well, there you go. You've heard it from Sprinkle. Um, now, what are you doing backstage? You're a, a groupie. No, I'm taking photos and I'm filming for these pamper pimps. What are pamper pimps? Well, the pamper pimps are the hottest act to hit Melbourne. Now, what's your name? Ainsley. Ainsley, how long have you been in Marching Girl for? Since day one. That would be like seven years now? No, a year and a half, two years. Hang on, that Dicky Jones bitch has been pushing it more than a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been running for, well, this was our second Mardi Gras this year. Vicky Jones, what are you? doing here? Well, well we're here, it, this is Hot August Night, two goes Moulin Rouge and this is our annual fundraiser and we raise money for, uh, for community groups other than ourselves so lesbian, uh, sorry, the uh, prospective lesbian parents group and lesbian cancer support and ourselves so it helps us get together costumes and all the rest, technical stuff for next year for Mardi Gras. <laughs> Now, Penny McDonald, that's, that's your girl. That's my girlfriend. <laughs> now, listen, I can't figure out what you're doing. You run the Pride March. Mm -hmm. You know, you slap that Liz bitch around. Now, what are you doing here? We are the technical support crew for the Melbourne Marching Girls. Hang on, hang on. I just met some dyke out there who says, says she's the truck bitch and she's the DJ and she's sleeping with the uh, Vicky Jones. What's going on here? Well, you need quite a few of us to get all those girls down the street. They've got to have lights, sound, a truck, generators. There's a big technical crew to get the Marching Girls down the street at Mardi Gras. So you actually probably get like $1,000 a day for doing this? Darling, we do some things for the love of it. <laughs> Hear that? Penny McDonald's doing something for love. Now, Sally Goldner, what are you doing pretending you're a marching girl? I'm not pretending. I've, I'm, a, I'm a galaxy girl. So strong and so sexy. Like, yeah, you know I can't figure out? They get involved in our collective and then they try to take over other collectives. I'm just saying out there to Vicky Jones, I think there's been a lesbian takeover in this group. Viva la revolution. <laughs>
fantastic. That was the Marching Girls, yes. the Melbourne Marching Girls, and our very own Sally Goldner, who is oh, wow. a Marching Girl as well. Yep. Next Correct. year at Mardi Gras, I'm going to be there. Fantastic. Mm. Look forward to that. We might have to strap a camera to you so that you can <laughs> show us what's going on. We can have Sally Can. Yes. <laughs> Marching Girls. Girl. Yeah. the media for me. <laughs> All right. More Russ Jacobs on the MCB News Desk. Take it away, Russ. Great. Thanks, Paul. Uh, over 100 people gathered last Wednesday in the Victorian rural centre of, uh, center of Trelgan, uh to launch the state's first country same-sex attracted youth website. The first regional initiative of its type in Victoria, the website called It's OK To Be Gay, pushes the message of you're not alone, hoping to reach young people in rural areas and provide an anonymous source of support uh, for many who feel they have no other place to turn. The project got off the ground after the Gippsland Gay and Lesbian Network put in an application for funding from Vic Health, receiving close to $20,000 to start up the website. The audience for the It's OK To Be Gay launch consisted of local residents, police officers and health workers, as well as a small contingency from Melbourne, including the Also Foundation President Rosemary Guinness and people living with HIV AIDS President John Day. The launch featured guest speakers Susan Davies, the independent member for Wontaggy, as well as Nan McGregor, longtime president of PFLAG Victoria, um, both of whom welcomed the initiative. Uh, Davies in particular has had a long interest in working on the problem of youth suicide, with some commentators saying that Davies' assistance with the website launch underscores her commitment to the causes of gay and lesbian community. Uh, also in Egypt this week, the trial of 52 men accused of having gay sex reconvened in a Cairo court so arguments could be heard um, regarding photographs that prosecutors say depict men in compromising positions. Uh, the men have been held in prison since May when police arrested the group uh, during a raid on the Ry Nile River floating nightclub rumoured to be a popular gay venue. That's it from the news desk. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Stop messing around, young lady. You're very naughty. Now, before we went to the break, I tried to remember Lucy, and I forgot Lucy, but I remembered Lucy now. So, um, Lucy Loosebox was apparently, uh, well, she was supposed to come in and join us today, but um, is sick. So we send mm. our best wishes to Lucy mm. and a speedy recovery. Get those lemon awesome. sips going, girl. Yep. And, um, okay, let's talk about last Friday night, Girl Bar. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's just like none of us wakes up every <laughs> time. She hasn't got a picture to hold of it. No, no, no picture, but thank you to our girl bar, um, Karina and Julie. We um, got some more money out of you guys again. Lovely. Lovely. We love we money. Like money. Thank you, girl. Keep mm. sending it in. And, uh, and apparently a fun night was had by all, I believe. Amy? Yes. You went? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't make it, but yes. I hear it was good. You're doing a good yes. place. Fantastic. We'll talk about this as well because I didn't give the details on this. The Rainbow Gong Show coming up Friday, 2nd of November, 7.30 at the Greyhound Hotel, which is on Brighton Road in St Kilda. Um, and as I said, they are looking for people to enter in and uh, it's like a you know gong show so um and you fun can win fa fabulous prizes and and it's a bent tv yeah, fundraiser absolutely. that's right so as i said there'll be us people down there we will and a we'll surprise celebrity judge yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, um, and a host for the night is amanda munro that's right um okay what's someone got something well i have oh, um, a group of male strippers have ensured there are private parts for $2.7 million <laughs> each. Oh. Uh, each. Each? Is that like yeah. each one part? testicle? Um, no, I'd, I'd, no, 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 for the, the package. Okay. Um, over damage by overexcited fans. <laughs> And have a $35,000 premium to cover it. What do you think is going to happen? Are going to be ripped off or something? Do you reckon your top leads are worth $2,000? No, 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 then we've got a man who was charged with having sex with his cat, but he's been found not guilty. Apparently sex got caught cat. because, because he the cat had sex with him. <laughs> no, well, he sent in photos to be developed, and that's oh. how he got caught. Oh. But he said that's no, true. they weren't having sex. It was just he was naked with the cat, and it was just a joke. It's like, uh. ha ha, very funny. And he went to the extent of taking Why do you take photos? I know. Photos? Oh, I just don't get that. Yeah, you, oh, that's very sad. And oh. just the last thing I sort of want to say. Do you know how devastated I was last week? A certain radio I, can only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. A certain radio station on the weekend, Sunday, I got excited because I hear this. 
um, <laughs> mix of an old Madonna song. Well, not an old one, a new one. <laughs> and then it was saying this person's going to come and be the biggest concert we've ever had in Australia. Oh, yes, yes. See, for four days, because they wouldn't announce at 5 o'clock on Thursday, for four days, I'm excited going, it's got to be Madonna, it's got to be Madonna, it's got to be... And it wasn't. It was that rumba, rumba, rumba. 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 So, I mean, it sounds like a really good concert, but... <laughs> That'd be about it for now. We will be back with segment three. Oh, I can't Lynn wait Gordon. for that one. Go get a cuppa. Oh, Lynn ah. Gordon, that's right. Lynn Gordon, yes. yes. That's right. She's going to be talking instead of signing. Mm. <laughs> on TV then welcome back to the third and final instalment for school this week and we have been joined here around this little table um, by That's Lynn like Gordon welcome Lynn yay now this is um, your second welcome because we've already seen you well you were standing there but you were sort of up there yes up there, there. Yeah, doing that up there. Yeah. Um, welcome along thank you thank so much you. for coming in today we oh, thank you really for appreciate the invitation. it um, now, um, we want to ask a bit about, because um, it's something that I remember doing at school. We talked about mm -hmm. um, sign language and all that sort of stuff, and we all sort of really got into it, but then it sort of just petered out. And I suppose because we didn't have any other, any other people doing it, or it wasn't, you know, um, something that was always uh, visible. It's, it's changing, though, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I, I think there's a lot more community awareness out there and it just seems to be growing and spreading. I've been interpreting for 11 and a half years now and the calibre of things that I'm doing now would, would have been unimaginable, mm -hmm. you know, 11 and a half years ago. And, um, you know, more and more people are making a commitment to um, inclusion and access. You've got the Melbourne Writers' Festival for the past two years, including interpreters for oh. the very first time, which yeah. is fantastic. And um, all sorts of different things are, are starting to happen. You know, the kids' group high five, yep. enlisting interpreter. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and, you know, and they've, they've also, you know, taken on learning Auslan themselves and, and actually utilising that in their choreography. So mm, wow. I think there's also a, an understanding of or a new realisation of the creative potential mm. of Auslan and, and sign language and, and just visual vocabulary and, and definitely and with those, those little E's too because they just oh, suck it all yeah. in at that, at that mm. age so to have a whole generation growing up with sign yeah. language as Exactly. Uh, spoken, uh, well, uh, uh, as another language, um, as English, you know, we all learnt French and German, I can't remember any of it, but no, so, no. To, ha to have no. that taught at such a, a young age would just be yeah. better. Imagine yeah. the world with with a whole lot more people, because you said there actually is uh, quite a shortage of um, translators. Um, yes, there is, and it, the problem is that the job is incredibly seasonal. Like mm. at the moment, I'm just absolutely flat chat. I spend five days a week in tertiary education, um, and there's a huge shortage of interpreters there. There's, you know, there's just so many people, deaf people going without interpreter coverage at present. But for the interpreters, come November, when the academic year is over, and all of a sudden it's just like, Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, down the DSS. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are we going to do? So it's a bit oh, like do acting. midsummer. Like acting in a way. You just have to sort of, um, you know, you get the gigs and take oh, them. Oh, the or? casual nature of it, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. There's there's very few full time jobs, and um, and so yeah, you do have to take the work when you can, and and that's why I'm just like absolutely flat stick at the moment, and it, it really is an occupational health and safety issue too, because we have a a great. Um, 
propensity for work-related injury because mm. it's just so physically oh, intense yeah. and, mm. Mm. and mentally <laughs> and, yeah. and so yeah so you've got this really horrible catch-22 situation where you know that you have to work enough to earn enough money to mm. see you through um, you know from about December to to March when sort of uni kick starts again but if you work that hard then you run the risk of, of doing yourself an injury yeah. so it's just yeah. always I find yeah. it really difficult to well, keep that balance yeah. we're sitting here watching right. you do it before and we're just like amazed at how quick you pick it up mm. and sort of like doing how tiring must it be oh it's exhausting and that's why you know in the university setting especially they usually have two interpreters if they can find mm. two interpreters <laughs> to work in tandem and you do say 15 20 minutes each and then just work in continual rotation because um, it certainly is mentally fatiguing yeah, and physically gotcha. fatiguing yeah. as well and and just the exposure to the diversity of subject matter you know it might It'll be, be zoology really oh. <laughs> <laughs> one hour architecture the next oh it's it's totally oh, surreal yeah, they come in here and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> work and out what we're talking about yeah. have words that you don't understand it's like <laughs> you don't have a sign it's, for it's well I mean that happens all the time because of the nature of the language yeah. in terms of words there are no signs for because it's not uh, it's a visual language <laughs> using visual concepts yeah. so um, it, it doesn't follow the structure of English. For so example, so when we said give it so like, what would you have done for um, them? Like, obviously there wouldn't be words. Yeah. Yeah. GLBT and then I did gay, um, lesbian, um, bisexual, transgender. So you're going to oh, have to make up a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually sign it faster than I can speak it, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. much so. Mm. Um, was there something you were saying? I was just going to ask, given all those you know, potential difficulties that there can be with it. What the heck did you get into it for in the first <laughs> place? You That's a really good question. Um, well, I'd done a year and a half of a teaching degree and just found that I had a few issues around discipline and children. Because um, yeah. <laughs> um, my kids just used to run, just run absolute riot and I really didn't care and I thought it was pretty fun. Um, but, you know, in the end, I, I spent about six years in... Um, uh, doing reception work and I just thought I can't bear it I can't be in surrounded by four beige walls anymore and I need something that gets me out there so you know it was a really good career choice for that yeah. <laughs> it's got me out there yeah. totally out there fantastic yeah, we're going to have to uh, cut you short there I'm afraid and I'm going to ask you to move over to your position <laughs> so that you can um, sign the rest of the <laughs> okay. Okay. back to work thank you for coming in today okay. we really yeah, appreciate it my pleasure fantastic <laughs> All right, now we are going to get ready for the final instalment from the lovely Ross Jacobs on the MCV News Desk. Take it away. Great. Thank you, Paul. Um, in what the Tasmanian Gay and Lesbian Rights Group are calling a world first, a special state task force has set long-standing goals for the Tasmanian community. The goals include the elimination of discrimination and abuse against the GLBT community, with special emphasis on drastically reducing the fear of crime for all gay men and lesbians. Amazingly, goals also include compulsory anti-homophobia training for all of Tasmania's state school teachers. Uh, also, uh, a bar called Barry at 64 Smith Street, Collingwood, hosts uh, until the 24th of, of September Crimes of Fashion a local play written and directed by Christian Bonetto and Lee Young, starring local personalities Adam, Hope, uh, Adam Richard sorry, and Kim Hope. Uh, according to their release, Crimes of Fashion is a no-holds-barred musical farce ready to strip and shoot at every insecurity lurking in this big round land called Oz. Uh, if South Park and Are You Being Served made love, they'd call the baby Crimes of Fashion, an un-Australian murder mystery. Uh, for inquiries, call uh, the Brookings Line at the Malt House on 9685 uh, one. Uh, tickets are $17.50 full, $13.50 concession. And tomorrow night, being Tuesday, uh, the Also Benefit is on, on the 11th of September, so all, all proceeds go to the Also Foundation. Finally, uh, the governor of Lesbos, a Greek island popular with lesbian tourists, has said that female couples should be fenced off to avoid offending local residents. <laughs> they express themselves publicly in front of children and families on the beach or eating at seaside restaurants, said Dimitri v uh, Venatsos, governor of the Aegean Sea island. Let's say they can do whatever they like, but in a fenced off area, and we will use the money they spend to develop tourism, he said. How rude. Anyway, back to you, squealers. That's it. See you guys. Oh, Bentevi Context. Whoops. Oh.
They're on the screen right now. If you want to contact Ben TV, call PO Box 1414 Collingwood 3066 or call 9417 4745. If you can't get through to that number, just keep trying. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, much Ross. Um, yeah, and don't forget you can email us on squirrelnews at qmail.com.au, I think it is. Um, all right. Um, uh, Chrissy, apparently, from this other, I was just going to get this one because I love my little Chrissy, um, uh, 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 was, uh, was uh, unlucky in love in a past life, B Magazine. Oh, in a past no. life. So that's what it's all about here in Pedro Breaking Up. Cosmopolitan, what a cop out you do the big thing and put Sarah Marie on. Oh, oh we're not there. Oh, Sarah oh. Marie on one <laughs> side oh. of the magazine and then oh, yeah. a skinny little scrag, uh, Britney oh. Spears on the other yeah, side with no fly in her jeans. <laughs> Sarah Marie would have sold your magazine far more than That's having right. the skinny one well, on like there it. as well. Um, let's take this opportunity to oh, yes. give Lynn Gordon our hugest yeah. round of applause ever on Squirrel. <laughs> for coming in today, Lynn, and thank you for making it such a unique show. And we hope that um, all yeah. our gay, lesbian, glibbit, um, glibbit deaf people out there it really enjoy the show today. Yeah. Um, and we hope you continue watching. And we'll try and speak properly so you can lip read or something. Yes. Like that. Yeah. And we'll talk time. over each other. All right. That is nearly it for today. Come on, um, quick. It's oh, weird. Oh, flash bad, oh, isn't it? Like your life. Like my <laughs> life, anyway. <laughs> Sally, thank you for coming in today. Um, um, so get out there and about this week. I'm sure I can't wait for next week's instalment. as to <laughs> Peter, I love you. Mm, uh, Troy, I love you too. Oh. And Mike, oh. go get jumping, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is it. We are out of here. Oh, Tonight oh, is, so nice. <laughs> to take us out, is the wonderful Asphyxia. She's a hula hoop girl um, and she's signing like a virgin at the same time. It is right. phenomenal. Have yeah. a look at it. See ya. See y'all. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>
straight from the horse's mouth. Yes, they have been adopted and taken over by lesbians again. B News is now a new lesbian magazine. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks, Lens. And I expect to see you out. <laughs> you sexist human being, you. <laughs> this is Squeal. This program is proudly brought to you by the Peel Dance Bar, corner of Peel and Wellington Streets, Collingwood.